Hey everyone, Jeff Douglas here with Appear and Top Coder. I'm going to show some demo apps for the new Enforce Tooling plugin with Note, of course. So we're going to run through a couple demo apps. One that just does things like get described, get objects, maybe inserts a new record and deletes it. And then we're going to actually deploy some Apex code. So we're going to run through those real quick. So first thing to do is create a folder. And then I'm going to make a um, package.json for our application. Let's go ahead and open this up real quick. Up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this package stuff in here. And this just specifies for our Node app. You know that we're using Enforce, the tooling plugin, and then we're going to use Promises also. So I'm going to do that real quick. And let's go ahead and run npm install to install our dependencies. All right, so we're all good there. Everything's installed. So now, of course, to connect to your force.com or you're going to need your connection parameters such as your username and password, your client ID and your client secret. So I'll go ahead and grab those. I'm going to go ahead, I've got mine stored in another file and I'm going to go ahead and add them to my environment variable by, you know, export, you know, sf user equals, you know, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and add those in real quick. Okay, so I just add those. So we'll do um, echo. So there's my user I'm using. We're all set there. Okay, so now we got our our variables set up in our environment. So let's go ahead and create a new a new file. Let's call tooling.g oops. And then we'll add that in here. Alright, so now we've got our new file here. So first thing we need to do is we're gonna add um, enforce this maybe just I just copy and paste it. Let's do that here. Let's just copy and paste here. Save a little time. So we're going to go ahead and require Enforce, and then we're going to set tooling with the Enforce tooling package. We we'll do that also, and then I'm going to add in my username and password from the environmental environment. There's my username and password, and the big thing we do is going to create our connection to our org. You can see we can create an object called org. We're going to call the create function for Enforce. We're going to pass it the client ID and client secret, the callback. This is the callback URL you can use. And then we're going to do single mode, which actually just caches your connection inside Enforce. You don't have to use it every time. And then we're going to tell it to use the tooling plugin. All right. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Let's say, um, so let me go ahead and grab some code here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go run the authenticate from Enforce on that org. I'm going to pass the username and password, and then if connects, I'm just going to say connected. If not, I'm going to have a, run an error here. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. So we'll say this is tooling. Let's see if we get to connect. Oh, there we go. Connected fine. No problem. All right. So let's go ahead and run our first one. So let's say we might want to do. Um, Let's do a describe real quick. So I'm gonna get some code in here for describe. So here's a here's a function we're gonna add that runs describe for enforce or for the tooling API. So we're gonna call it the tooling API, get describe, we're gonna tell it what class describe, and then on the callback, we're gonna just output what the, the Apex class looks like or an error. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we'll run run that. I thought I just close terminal. All right, so we'll do do a describe our Apex class, and there we go. There's all of our fields comes back, all the URLs for the objects, all that stuff right there for the Apex class, all the relationships, everything's on there. So there's a symbol to describe for you there. So now let's go ahead and run another one. Let's go ahead and grab and do get all the objects that are in our org. So we'll add a new one here. Objects, we're going to go call objects on the plugin, and we're going to go ahead and just iterate through all the objects that were returned here. So, got that, call that method now. Let's see, in the tooling, and there's our object. So, you can, we got name, static resources, metadata, all kinds of things that the tooling API has access to. 
and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get a specific object. Let's get, see what it looks like when we grab just let's say um, an apex class. So we're gonna get a certain object type. The type we're gonna get is apex class. And we're gonna output that. So we're gonna change this here. We're gonna get this specific object. Now this of course doesn't have as much information as described. It's kind of like a high level describe with only certain things in there. If you want to get the full contents, of course, you're gonna have called it the describe. And then last one, let's go ahead and query something. Let's go ahead and run a query from the tooling. So we'll do. We're gonna, here's our query we're gonna run. Select ID and name from the Apex class and just get the first 10. So we're gonna pass in this query and then we're gonna go ahead and iterate through the response that comes back. All right, let's run that. And there's our, all our Apex classes right there. So last one we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create a record and then we're going to delete it. We're gonna create a metadata container record. So here's the function for that. It's called create and delete, create and delete. We're gonna create a new metadata container. We just pass a certain name. You see this is the, the body here. So if this was a, something like an Apex class or Visual Force page, you know, the object would be, um, would have many more parameters based on what you pass in on this object. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, after we output it, we're gonna go ahead and delete it just to clean up after ourselves too, okay? All right, so let's run this. All right, so there you go. So you can see it created our new metadata container record and then it went and deleted it successfully. So that's just a few little um, methods you can run, more or less the CRUD methods and the tooling methods for, for and the Enforce tooling plugin. So let's do something a little bit more, more exciting. Let's go ahead and create um, a small little script that you can use to deploy records, or I'm sorry, deploy Apex code. So let's do. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you here. I've got actually a um, class in here. Let's open this up. I've already got the Apex class in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy most of this out of here real quick. Because we don't need all of it. Get, we'll get rid of all of this. All right, so basically the same process here. And let's see. So this time we're gonna do, it's gonna be a little different. We're gonna use, um, we're gonna use promises. If you haven't used promises, they're really fun really easy to use when you're doing callbacks, multiple callbacks to Salesforce. So we're gonna actually use those and I'll show you how those work real quickly. We're also gonna add a few things in here. I'm gonna add in the ID of a class, an Apex class in Salesforce that I already have. I'm just gonna update that class and here's the new code I'm gonna update that class with. Let's just do this here. Let's just do There's the class. Actually, let me show what the class looks like real quick here. So here is the class. Let me drag this over here. So here's the class we're gonna update. You can see it has the same ID here. We're just gonna update this tooling class here with uh, just some, we're gonna add, we're gonna add this string equals S in here. All right, so let's, we've got that in there. So, Let's go ahead and start pasting some code. I'm just going to paste this code in here and then talk about it because it would be much easier to look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to use promises. Like I said, if you haven't looked at promises, go ahead and uh, look at those. It's under, you can query them and find Enforce, or I'm sorry, Node Promises and the package is Q. There's a lot of tutorials that explain promises. Really nice stuff. It's much better than using async. So what we're gonna do is here, we're gonna go ahead and first create a deployment container, and then we're gonna add our updated code, and then we're gonna deploy that code, and then we're gonna get the status of our code. And if there's any failures along the way, we're gonna output that failure here, okay? So let's go ahead, here's the code for creating the container. You can see that it creates the container, passes the name over here. So what this typically does, these methods that return a promise is, it creates a deferred promise, and then it returns that right away. So that way it has something like container, a promise container to fill later on. So after it calls create container, it's gonna, if there's a no error, it's gonna pass back, it's gonna resolve this deferred promise and pass back the container ID 
or it's going to reject the promise and pass the error back. So that's kind of the same structure of every single one of these functions are going to do here. So we're going to create the container and then we're going to pass back the container ID. And then we're going to update the code. We're going to pass in the updated code here. So here's our updated code. Of course, create the deferred container or the deferred promise. Pass it back here. Then we're going to create an artifact. Now the artifact has a helper method on the Enforce plugin called Create Deployment Artifact, which basically sets up an object with all the fields you want, and then it passes in the new code and the Apex class that we're updating. It hides a lot of that implementation for you. And then we're going to add the con artifact container, add the artifact to the container. We're going to pass the container ID which was passed into this met function and then passing the artifact. And then if that was successful, we're gonna go ahead and pass the container ID back. If not, we're gonna pass an error back. Of course, both those to the promises. And then we're gonna deploy. So the deploy function looks like this right here. Oops, looks like this right here. So here's the deferred promise again. We pass that back. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the metadata container. Basically, use that, set that as a variable so we can use it on the cleanup in the next function. We're going to call deploy container. We're going to say check is check only equals false. That way, it actually deploys it. By default, the tooling path plugin um, does not actually deploy it, only runs it. And actually, it, it, it compiles it, but it doesn't deploy it. Sorry. And then we're going to go ahead, of course, if it successfully deploys, we're going to pass the async container ID that was created for this deployment back. So that way we can check the status in the next method. And if it is an error, of course, we're going to reject that promise. And the last one is the get deploy status. Now, what this does is it actually checks the deployment status of the container. And if the state container status that comes back is queued, it's going to call this method again recursively with the container, the AC container ID. If it's not queued, it's going to be one of these states over here, and it's going to print out certain things, such as it's completed, then we're done. If it fails, it's going to pass back the compile errors. If it's an error, it's going to pass back some of the different errors on deployment. And then if it's not any of those, it's going to pass back another status. And then at the end, we're going to actually delete this metadata container that we created, so that way we clean up after ourselves. Okay? So let's go ahead and go back up here. You can kind of see this. So again, we're going to create our container with this name. We're going to add the updated code. We're going to deploy it. And then we're going to check the deployment status continually until it's completed. All right, so that should, that should work. Let's run this real quick here. Oh, we don't want that. Let's see what we get here. All right, so there we go. So you can see we started the deployment process. We're deploying our code. We're checking the status of code. The, stir, the status is currently queued, so we're going to check it again. So here we go. So now you can see the code successfully deployed. Let's see if I over, if I actually refresh this page here, we should see the new. There we go. So there's our new code here. So that's how easy it is actually to deploy new code with the Enforce tooling plugin. So I hope you guys can think of some great ideas for this. Uh, I've got some stuff I'm working with and it should be awesome. If you have any ideas or issues, go ahead and put them on the, the GitHub repo and we'll look at them. Thanks a lot.